Hi, this session is on the following um, quadratics practice test. So we will be going over some of these questions that will be on your test. With the first question, you have to expand um, the following and you do the exact same thing with a binomial um, and this two, just ignore it. So first expand the brackets and the two just stays outside. So we will have um, two out there, just leave it out there and now expand your brackets. So x times x, which is x squared, um, and then x times minus 3, which is minus 3x, and then 4 times x, which is positive 4x, and then 4 times minus 3 is minus 12. And put close brackets. Okay, now you can expand the 2 now, or you can simplify first. So I know I can simplify my x's. So minus 3x plus 4x, that simplifies to positive x, or 1x, minus 12, and now my final step is to expand the 2. So everything gets a turn to be multiplied with the 2. So we end up with 2x squared plus 2x minus 24. And that's it. So whenever you have a question like this, just ignore the factor on the outside of the brackets and then first expand your brackets um, and then expand the 2 at the end. Now if you want to make sure you've actually got the correct answer, you can factorize this. Um, and see if you get what we started off with. So as a quick example, to factorize this, I'll go back a step and take the 2 out again. So 2, we've got x squared plus x minus 12. And then this is your um, trinomial that you can factorize. So we get our two brackets ready. So I've got x times x, which is x squared. Now something times something to give me 12, or negative 12, that adds to a positive 1. Well, I'll know 4 times 3 is 12, and that can get to 1. So if I put plus 4 and minus 3, well, my, uh, 4 times a negative 3 is negative 12, and 4 minus 3 is x. And if I compare this to my original answer or question, I have the exact same thing. So if you do have time in a test, just factorize it again just to make sure you've got the right answer. Now with 1b, um, I'm not going to do this one because you, you know the skills on how to do this. Expand each side first and then simplify. Um, and the answer that I got was this one here. So 2x squared minus 7x uh, minus 16. And if I have made a mistake with any of these questions, just put a post and to, to correct me because sometimes I, I do make mistakes. Now, question two asks us to write this equation in standard form. And in brackets, it's got ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And I'll explain what that is. Um, and this is actually really, really easy. It's basically, barely no working out at all. Now, when you see something like this, um, you can see it is a trinomial. We've got the x squared, the x, and c is basically c for constant. And the a and b are just coefficients. So for example, an example um, might be 2x squared plus um, 5x. You could have negatives as well, so minus 2, and the y is 0. So this is an example of um, a trinomial. And if you wanted to state what a was, for this one, I'd say a is the positive 2. This one here is b is a positive 5, and c is a negative 2. And you will see more of this next year, but just remember the a, the b, and the c are just numbers in the trinomial, and c is obviously the constant. So if I need to rearrange this, and of course the, the, the purpose of rearranging is so we can factorize. Right now, I can't factorize this because it's the x's are on both sides, um, and I want everything on the one side so I can have my trinomial um, in this case. So to bring everything to one side, remember we want it in that form. Um, so we've got a x squared plus bx plus c and 0 by itself, okay? Where y is 0, so we can find the x-intercepts. Um, and to do that, we've already got the x squared on this side, so I'm going to bring the 5x to that side and the negative 3 to that side. And you basically use your, um, your equation skills. The opposite of positive is negative and so on. So the x squared's already there. And keep the x squared first, like in this form, ax squared's first. x squared's usually written first, okay? Um, and now, opposite of positive 5x, well, I have to minus 5x, and it'll, it will come to this side. So minus 5x... They cancel out, and I have the minus 5x now on this side. Um, and now that negative 3, I will plus 3. They cancel out, so plus 3 on that side. And then on this side, I end up with 0. So the whole thing equals 0. 
and my y is basically zero. Now I can factorize this if it's possible um, and to find my x-intercepts. So with 2b, once again, I want everything on one side but in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And of course, they could also be negatives. Um, for this one, whenever you see brackets, the first thing you do is expand your brackets and get rid of them. So I end up with, um, I won't put equals there, I end up with 2x squared um, minus 8x equals 7. And you can see there is one more step. I've got to bring the 7 to this side. So if it's a positive 7, I'll minus 7. So I end up with 2x squared minus 8x minus 7. And on this side, I end up with a 0. And it's now in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, um, which maybe I could, I could factorize it. Now with question three, we have to factorize each of the following. And um, when we have done a lot of these in class, and hopefully you've done, done um, some for homework. Um, so we'll do, I think we'll do all of them because they shouldn't take too long. Okay, so for the first one, um, by now you should be able to identify different types of quadratic equations. We know they're quadratic when you've got an x squared, of course, um, and even if you don't see an x squared, you can see that like for b, when I expand it, I will get an x squared, okay? Um, and we know the purpose of factorizing, to find any x-intercepts. Now with the first one, whenever you see like a squared and just a constant, think of that form, a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b and a minus b. Whoop, that's supposed to be a minus. Okay, um, so whenever you see an x squared and a number by itself, just think of that. So to factorize this, I know 36 can be written as 6 squared, um, and there's my a and my b. So I end up with a plus b, so x minus 6, or plus 6, and then x minus 6. Okay, a plus b, a minus b. And if you expand it, you end up with the same thing. So those ones are pretty easy because we have done quite a few of those. Um, with b, these were one of the first ones that we've done. Don't expand this. What's common on both sides? The brackets, x plus 3 and x plus 3. So I will take out x plus 3 as my first factor, okay? And what's left? We've got 2 minus x. And that 2 minus x just goes in the brackets and we're done. And that's how easy it is. And we factorize those two. Okay, so with uh, 3c, we have 10x squared minus 15x. It's not a trinomial, there's no constant. With ones like these, they are the easiest to factorize. We do it at year eight level. What can we take out on both sides? Start with your coefficients. So we've got 10 and 15. I know a factor of 10 and 15 is five. So I'll get my brackets ready. There's no negative to take out, so that stays a negative. So five out there. So 10 divided by five is two. Five divided, uh, 15 divided by five is three. So two and three are my leftovers. And then take out 1x, it's gone from there, and then we've got 1x left over here. And we're done, that's been factorized. Um, with d, once again, we've got squares on both sides. I know there's a y there, um, we don't know what the, the y is, it could be any number, but we can still factorize this anyway. Um, so think of a squared minus b squared. Um, so then I'm gonna rewrite it as 49 and 64, they're perfect squares, so I can write it as this. 49 can be seven squared, 64 can be eight squared, and we can put them in brackets. So we can have it like this, seven X bracket squared minus eight Y and close bracket squared. We can see what A is, A is seven X. Hang on a second. So A is seven X, B is eight Y. Put it into that formula and you end up with um, A plus B, so seven X plus eight Y, and then A minus B. So 7x minus 8y, and we're done. Okay, with e, um, you may have gotten stuck on e um, without realizing that it's almost in the form of a squared minus b squared. Okay, we've got a minus there, there's a squared over here, but that seven doesn't look like it's squared, but we know that we can square root it to square it. So what I mean is, let's rewrite this as um, x plus five, they're both being squared, which is good, so that's gonna be my a, minus, I want to square the seven, but I have to square root it, so it cancels out. So I can write it like this, square root of seven squared, okay? And you can put brackets around it if you want to. So really that is still seven, because there's two in the square root cancel out. But by doing that, I can see that my A, oops, didn't change color. 
my a is x plus 5, my b is the square root of 7, which is a third, and just leave it in third form. We can put into the calculator and get an approximate answer if you had to graph this, but at this stage, just leave it in third form. So a is now x plus 5, so x plus 5, that's my a, um, plus my b is the square root of 7, and you leave it like that, okay? Leave it as a third. And then your next bracket, oh, I can't really fit it in there. We've still got x plus 5 as a, but then the minus, I'll just squeeze it in, and then square root of 7, and you leave it like that. So that's pretty much it. That's a 7 at the end. Okay, with f, um, once again, it's not a trinomial. We don't have a constant, so these ones are really easy to factorize. You notice there's a negative at the front. That must go as well. So I'll get my, two, my brackets ready. Now, because I'll be taking out a negative, Opposite happens, that becomes a positive. So I'll put a plus in there. And now starting with my coefficients, 12 and 20, the highest factor of 12 and 20 um, would be, I guess, four. So take out the four. 12 divided by four is three. 20 divided by four is five. So we've got three and five there. Now take out an X, we've got one there and left with one there. So an X is taken out. And the Y, unfortunately, is by itself. So it just stays there. Um, and just to double check, if we expand this, we end up with negative 12 x squared, and then plus a negative and a positive make a negative, so negative um, 20 x y, so that's right. All right, with g, we have a trinomial, okay? x squared in the x and a 12, or it's in the form of a x squared plus b x plus c. It's in that form, okay? And we can have negatives. So trinomials, at this level, you factorize monic trinomials where there's a one there, okay? So we end up putting our brackets, getting our brackets ready. X times X is X squared. And now I have to end up with a negative 12. So I know I have to have a negative and a positive or other way in my answer. Now, what is something times something to give me um, 12 that can add to, to four? Um, so factors of 12 could be one times 12, four times three, but I know that um, six times two can give me a four. So if I um, have a negative two plus a six, that will give me a positive four, and negative two times a positive six gives me my negative 12. So that was pretty easy. And with the last one for number three, um, it's a trinomial again, but we notice it's not um, a monic trinomial just yet. There's an, a three there. So to get rid of that three, we have to take it out as a factor first. And so we end up with a three and then um, x squared um, plus nine x plus 20, okay? So always take those out as a factor. Um, and that three we know just stays outside now. We can ignore it, get our two brackets ready. So x times x gives us my x squared. Everything's positive, so positive goes in there. Now something times something that can get me to, to nine. Well, I know that four times five is 20 which also gives me a nine, and it's been factorized. Now with question four, it asks us to use the null factor law to solve these equations. So with question three, we could have actually done that. We could have, after we factorized, we could have solved them to find the x-intercepts, but the question didn't ask us to do that, it just said to factorize. So over here now, we're going to take it a step, uh, take a step further. Now we can see that 4a and 4b, they have been factorized for us, but 4c and 4d haven't. So remember, you may have to factorize it first in, in some questions. So let's start with 4a. And also what I'll do with question five, it says go back and find the y-intercepts for question four. Um, and I'll do that at the same time. Okay, so with the first one, um, we can see there's an x outside the bracket um, and then x plus three. Just remember this x automatically equals zero. So we'll have x equals zero. That works. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then the x plus three also gets a turn to equal zero. That's using the null factor law. Um, and then we can continue to solve this. So for this one, we'll end up with x equals a negative three. And we're done. So we have solved this equation. And if you want to understand what's happening or I'll do a quick sketch, we know we've actually found the x-intercepts. So if I um, do a quick sketch, okay, if x is negative three, and there's my zero, my parabola will be coming down this way and through my 
um, through the origin. Okay, and um, if you notice, if it, whenever an x intercept passes through the origin, that means the y intercept will also have to be zero. So if we go and find the y intercept for this, okay, when x is zero, so when x is equal to zero, sorry, it started to, to lag a little bit, which is annoying. Replace the x's with zero. So we'll have zero bracket zero plus three. And instead of putting equal to zero, I'm going to put equals to y because we're trying to find the y intercept. Um, and we can see that we end up with, there we go, we can see that we're going to end up with zero because zero plus three is three and then equals y and then zero times three is just zero. So y equals zero. So that's our y intercept. And we can see how that equals our y intercept. Okay, with 4b, once again, this has been factorized. Um, and imagine there was an equal zero at the end because to solve these, y has to be zero because we're finding the x-intercepts. So with this one, each one gets a term to equal to zero. And we can see we may have to um, do some calculations for these to solve it. So with the first one, um, we've got a minus three, so we have the plus three. So we end up with, I'll just change my color. We end up with 2x equals um, a positive 3, divide by 2, divide by 2. So x will equal 3 over 2, a positive 3 over 2, or you can write it as 1.5 or 1.5. And, and that makes more sense to us when drawing. Um, with the second one, you can see we'll have this same answer, except it'll be negative. And let's just check that. So we've got 2x plus 3. So 2x equals minus 3. So minus 3 on both sides. And divide by 2, divide by 2. Um, so x will equal... A negative one and a half for one point five. Okay, so to draw it, you'll if we do did a quick sketch. Oh, and the other thing you could do um, to help you check your answers when you're working at home, um, maybe you could download. I've got a good or oh, an app, a free app that I've found. Um, it's called Quick Graph. If it works, here we go. Oh, it's not going to work, so I can't actually show you. But I want if you can download Quick Graph or whatever um, graphing tool you may have, even on the internet. Um, it's not going to work on this. I can't show you. Um, just so you can draw your parabolas and to see whether you you found the right x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, or even drawn the right parabola. Okay, with 4c, you can see that it has not been factorized for us. Um, so, and it's a trinomial, so we have to factorize it. First, take out that 2. So, I've got 2 bracket. And then um, I'll get x squared minus 8x plus 15. So everything is halved. And that all can equal 0. I'll squeeze it in because y is 0. Um, and now that 2, you ignore it. Even when you solve it, you just ignore it. And I'll explain why. Um, so the 2 stays out there. Get your two brackets ready. And y is still 0. And then we end up with x times x. Um, we've got a positive and a negative. So they sh I'll end up with two negatives. Give me a positive there, positive 15. And something times something to give me 15, that gives me a negative 8. Well, I know that 3 times 5 is 15. And minus 3 minus 5 is a negative 8. Now, I need to still, I factorize it now, but I need to solve this now. Y is already 0. Um, and to solve this, it's a bit different to the others because you notice there's a 2 out here. Do not let that confuse you. That 2, you basically ignore it. And the reason is... Um, that 2 is stuck to everything by a times. If I started to solve this, this equation, I would divide by the 2 first and then divide by 2. What is 0 divided by 2? It's just 0. So the 2 basically disappears. And you're left with x minus 3 and x minus 5 equals 0. Okay? So whenever you've got a factor outside those brackets like that, just ignore it. Um, or divide it by, just divide it and it cancels out. And if you're wondering what does that 2 actually do, when you learn next year how to draw parabolas in more detail, that 2 actually makes your parabola more narrow, okay? Um, but you learn that more next year. So to solve this, each one will equal 0, and I can basically see my answer. What's the opposite of negative 3? It's going to be a positive 3. Opposite of negative 5? It's going to be a positive 5. So you can show working out, but with easy ones like this, you can just write the answer. And we're done. Now, D, 
um, is one that we haven't actually done in class and it's actually different to every other one. Now, it hasn't been factorized, but you notice we've only got an x squared, whereas the other ones we've factorized, we've had, for example, an x at the end, and that means we can take out x. But for this one, you may notice, we can't actually take out the x. We can take out a factor of three. So if you wanted to, you could do this. You could have three bracket x squared minus four, make it equal zero, um, and that's correct. But the problem is we still have this x squared. Now, with ones like these, you just solve it as you normally would. And think of Pythagoras, those skills you learned in Pythagoras. What I mean is, um, because we've only got an x here, we can solve for x. So I'm not even going to bother factorizing it. You can use you can use that step if you want to, but you don't need to. What I mean is solve it as a normal equation. Um, so for example, well, once again, equals zero. So I've got three x squared minus 12. Um, oh, sorry, I'll plus, yep. Yeah equals zero. So I have to plus 12, plus 12. So I have 3x squared equals 12. Then we divide by 3, divide by 3. So x squared equals a 4. Now, this is the part where I mean by Pythagoras. When you've got a squared and you want to get rid of it, you have to square root it and it cancels out. Um, but you do the same thing with that 4. So square root it. But this is something that may be new to you. And once again, this is more a year 10 level question. When you have a square root, there is actually a positive and a negative in front of it. Okay? So that's something that might be new to you. So from now on, square roots actually have a positive and negative in front that are invisible. And you can see why. Because now I will have um, x is equal to a positive square root of 4 or x is equal to a negative square root of 4. And square root of 4 happens to be 2. So x is equal to a positive 2 or x is equal to a negative 2. Um, so this is more of a challenge one, I guess. But it's just as easy. You just have to remember that new skill. And that is a square root from now on has a positive and a negative in front of it. Okay? And then they each get a turn. So to draw your parabola, you'd have a positive 2 and a negative 2. And the parabola passes through those two points. Okay, so halfway would be the y-axis. That would be the axis of symmetry. Um, so that was something different. I may put it on your test more of as a, as a challenge question and to see who actually watched this. Now, we're almost done. Um, with six, um, and I'm oh, sorry, I forgot to find the y-intercepts or the other ones, but that's easy. Remember, when x is zero, that's the y-intercept. And use um, a graphing tool to check if you've got the correct y-intercept. All right, with six, explain the three types of solutions we can have. Um, solutions mean x-intercepts. So the three types of solutions a parabola can have, and it asks us to use a diagram. So we've got one, two, three. We can have two solutions. We can have, um, oops, so that can be zero solutions. Or we can have one where the parabola just touches the, um, the x-axis, so we can label our axes as well, y, x, um, and that is one solution. Okay, and we learned um, where we see this, and where we got one solution, remember, it's a perfect square. So we might see something like this. That's going to be a one squared, okay, where you've got two solutions that are the same. Okay, so on your test, just do that. All right, and with the final question, this basically sums up everything we have learned, and the whole point of learning everything is to draw a parabola, okay? And question seven breaks it up into steps for you. So A says, what is the y-intercept? So that's pretty easy. When x is zero, we end up with y equals zero squared plus four times zero minus five. That's going to be zero. That's zero. So we end up with negative five. So with trinomials, the y-intercept is always the constant. So that one's for A. Now, for question B, we need to find the x-intercepts, and we know how to do this. We have to first factorize and then solve. Um, and we've got a trinomial, so we know how to factorize these. So get our two brackets ready. And we end up with x times x. Um, and now I've got a positive and negative, so I know I'll have to have a positive 
positive and a negative to get the negative. Now, something times something to give me five, well, can only be five and one, that can give me a four. So if I have a positive five minus four, sorry, minus one, that will give me a positive four. So that's done. And now I need to, once it's, so I'll factorize this first. Now I'm going to solve it. So this question, when it says to find the x-intercepts, these are the steps that you know you have to follow. Now to solve it, I have to make y equal zero. So when y is zero, um, so I'll end up with x plus five, whoops, and um, x minus one equals zero. I'm just putting it on that side. And let's continue to solve this. So we'll have the opposite of x plus 5 would be x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to positive 1. And they are my two x-intercepts, which I'll put on my graph in a minute. Okay, now 7c asks us to find the turning point and using the method, um, using the average of the x-intercepts. And that's the method that you've learned this year. There are other methods that you'll learn next year. Um, but this is this is a method that you can use. Um, now, you have to find the x-intercepts first, and we've got those here. Um, just to understand what's happening, if you do a quick sketch of these x-intercepts, so x is negative 5 and x is positive 1, my parabola is passing through there, with, through those two points. And the x uh, sorry, the turning point is um, halfway. So turning point's there. So halfway... Um, is my x value there. So that's the axis of symmetry, which you would have learned in the other lesson. So if I know my parabola can be cut in half, I can simply find halfway between my two x-intercepts. And to do that, we're going to be finding the x value of the turning point. So remember, the turning point has an x value and a y value. Okay, that's a point on the graph. That's what we mean by turning point. So um, to find the x value, remember it's halfway between negative 5 and 1. So I would have x value is equal to negative 5. So average means you add them, plus 1, and divide it by 2. Um, so x will equal... Oh, sorry, it's lagging a little bit. So x will equal um, negative 4 divided by 2. So therefore, x would equal negative 2. So that's the x value of my turning point, negative 2. But I still need to find the y value. So I'm going to sub in... Um, when x is negative 2, Let's see if it works. So there's the working out. Um, and now we're going to sub in when x is negative 2 into the original equation and we'll find our y value. And that's it. Okay, so we'll find the y value of our turning point when x is negative 2. So sub it in. So we end up with y equals, now make sure you substitute with brackets. You can see why it's important for this question y equals negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2, or sorry, negative 2 minus 5. Now, without the brackets, I would have ended up with a negative 4. So minus 2 squared in brackets is a positive 4. Um, plus 4 times a negative 2 is negative 8 minus 5. So a positive and negative make a negative. So I end up with 4 minus 8 minus 5. So y equals, I end up with a negative 9. Okay, because 4 minus, yeah, it's a negative 9. And if it works, here we go. And so this is my turning point. My, therefore, my turning point is when x is negative 2 and y is negative 9. Okay, and show that as a turning point in your answer. So therefore, turning point is that. And now let's draw our graph. Now, of course, when you draw it, use a ruler, try and use a proper scale. I'm just going to do a sketch, okay? Now, when it comes to drawing parabolas, you know if you've made a mistake if the points don't match up, okay? So what I mean is if the turning point, for example, if y wasn't negative 9, it wouldn't work. If it was a positive, it, you couldn't draw it into a parabola. So let's hope, hopefully we've got all this right. So my y-intercept is negative 5. So I'm just going to, like I said, if, please make sure you're using a ruler and a scale. So imagine negative 5 is there. That's my y-intercept. Okay. Um, my x-intercepts, um, one is negative 5 and one is positive 1. And my turning point is when x is negative 2, so I'll estimate negative 2 is there, and when y is negative 9. 
negative 9, negative 2, and my turning point is just about there, okay? And so when it comes to drawing my parabola, I'll pass through all those points. The turning point touches the, the point and goes back up through one, whoop, and there's your parabola, okay? And this one matched up, so I could draw a perfect parabola. Um, so I haven't made a mistake anywhere. Um, and it tells us on the question, show all these important points. So the turning point, just show it on your graph, minus 2, minus 9, and everything else is shown. Label your axes, and you're done. So hopefully um, this has helped, and please make sure you complete all your other homework so you're ready for your test on Friday. Thank you.